First of all, I'd like to thank the Typography Society of India for giving me this opportunity to present about some of the work that I've done and particularly one special project that I'm working on uh, right now. So we've got a lot to cover, so let's get started right away. Now, I was asked to introduce myself and say a few things about what I did uh, when this whole uh, thing about my uh, love for typography started. Um, when I started getting interested in typeface design, I didn't know the term typeface design. The word font didn't appear in my vocabulary at the time. But I was very interested in what happened in printing presses because my dad was a writer. And I used to follow him to all these presses where his publications were printed, his um, invitation cards were printed, his brochures or posters were printed. And I was very intrigued by the way they assembled letters and got these blocks together. Uh, to get some text printed on hundreds of thousands of pages. So that's, that got me excited, um, looking at each of those uh, slots, each of those metal pieces and how letters were carved under them and how they inscribed uh, beautiful letter forms um, uh, for print. Um, my dad was a Tamil writer, so a lot of the presses that I visited had typefaces that were designed for Tamil scripts. But the frustration set in in the year 1983 when we started doing events for school children and we wanted to publish books um, and magazines in three different scripts. And we had an issue. When you want to do something in Tamil, it costs a lot more than what it used to cost, uh, what cost the, the, the cost of a page in English or Malay. Uh, Malay uses the Latin script, by the way. And it was a lot cheaper, a lot easier. Uh, but in Tamil, you cannot edit once they have composed the page. You cannot make changes. There are no typefaces. They are not, you, know, you can't have a bold uh, text when you want it. So we had all these issues. That made me angry and I wanted to do something about this. So when I graduated in 1985, um, there was this MS-DOS computer. That was the first computer. This is 1985. I don't know if all of you were born by then, but you know, that was the state-of-the-art machine that I had. How do I make these machines speak Tamil? Will this have an answer to this question, to these frustrations that we had? So I started thinking, I'm an engineer by qualification. I graduated with a degree in electronics engineering. So I look at some of the devices, some of the parts of the computer and started looking at where these characters are generated, these characters that appear on the screen, where are they generated? Can I reverse engineer that? and put, make them display Tamil text instead of English or alongside English. So I found that particular chip that's called the character generator chip. And I started looking at how characters are stored in, into them. And that's how they are stored. They are like bitmaps of uh, all the Latin text that we know of. Now, how do I get my text to display on the screen that only can display 80 characters wide and 25 lines? And it has a limited number of space, a limited amount of space for you to put a character inside. And how do I get the keyboard to send Tamil uh, keys in, when, you, when you're pressing the English uh, text? So I started writing programs. I started designing text. And a bit of how, what I did was is this. This is the character generator, how, a text, uh, how the, the alphabet capital A is stored. Uh, I want to skip all that because I know we are designers. We are not engineers. But you get the idea of how the text is stored on the device. And you know, if I gray out all the zeros, you can see the ones appearing and that's how A is stored. And I copied the idea and stored Tamil letters, like that's how Ka is stored. And you see that, you know, that's the, uh, uh, the, the vertical line space, the vertical uh, character space. You have, that's just one zero, one line of zero. So you can't fill up the entire eight uh, character, uh, zeros that you have. So you have to like squeeze your Tamil in there. And that's your baseline, that's your accenter, that's your descender. That's the limit you have to work with. You cannot set your own um, accenters or descenders. So with that, I got the screen done. And how do I do the, the printer? Using the same technique, um, I wrote assembler routines, programming every pin as, you know, how it should hit the paper when the printhead moves from left to right. This was dot matrix printers. This was before um, the laser printers were popular. So again, that's how I designed the letters. And this is the first publication that was done with Thought printers. A, pub a publisher who was a friend of my father's 
wanted to be the first uh, uh, Tamil publisher to publish a book that was printed with the system that I designed at the time. Then came laser printers, um, like mid 80s. And then again, using the same technique, I designed PCL bitmap fonts. Scalable, true type, or, uh, or uh, Adobe's Postscript fonts were not yet popular. Um, and this is the time, and then after that, of course, dailies, monthlies, weeklies, periodicals, and all that started using my system because they were now able to make Tamil pages a lot easier. They can edit, they can change tags, they can put different typefaces and all that stuff. Now, this was done at the time when there was no internet, there was no Google, and there were no mobile phones. I don't know if you can imagine such a time, even I can't, because I, although I did come from that time, I can't imagine there was a time when there was no internet, no Google. I couldn't Google to find out how this, this programming language worked, how this PCL uh, specification worked. No, I couldn't find. I can do that now, even for the, uh, technologies that emerged at that time, but I couldn't find then. So, what were my tools? 1985, what were the tools that I used to make this? Well, that's my first tool. That's the second one. If some of you have used MS-DOS computers, that's the text editor. And that's the assembler language, uh, which was used to write programs for the Intel uh, architecture, Intel CPU. So that's square paper, text editor, and assembler language. Those were my tools. Then came Microsoft Windows, which had graphics, user interface, you can use a mouse to move things around. And this was the most sophisticated tool for me at the time because it could register a pixel. Every time I click on the screen, the, the, the pixel is registered. And then I would go and write programs to interpret those pixels and convert them to fonts. But that was all the fun stuff. Anyway, 25 years later, there's a lot more stories to tell you, but there's no time. So 25 years later, I had these typefaces for all of the Indian languages Indo-Chinese language, Sri Lankan language, uh, uh, included in iOS and macOS. So that gives you a chronology of things that I, that I did from 2010. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about this new typeface, which is like the star of today's talk. I'm, I'm calling it Anay. Anay in Tamil means mother. Um, that's because this is a derivative of another typeface that I did much earlier called Amma, which is also another name for mother. So because it's a derivative, both of these are dedicated to my mom, my late mom. Um, the metaphor is, how would you like a typeface, uh, 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 you know, for a letter that is writing to your mother? So it's like your handwriting, uh, not too formal, uh, but it's, you know, it's pleasant for the eyes. I'll give you a little bit of insights and uh, briefly describe what this typeface looks like and then talk about some internals. What is this good for? It's ideal for informal text. Secondary voice, if you want to say something while you're saying something formal. Uh, for call-outs, posters, banners, presentations like what I'm doing now. And it could be a single template for multiple scripts. So if you're doing a presentation in English, Tamil and Hindi or uh, Marathi, it, this could be a typeface that you can use it for because then you have you know, something that harmonizes across all the languages. Um, it could be an ideal typeface for a notes app because it resembles a handwritten uh, typeface. Now, uh, the primary goal of this is to be a multi-script typeface. So I wanted to make sure that the Devanagari, which covers Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, and you know a lot of those Latin languages, uh, they all harmonize together. So if you have Indians living in the broad, in France, for example, and they are preparing a poster, that has something in French and something in Hindi and something in Tamil, they can have a typeface that you know harmonizes across all of their messages. Now, in, in Devanagari, I've also included Vedic signs for those who are interested in Sanskrit. Are people using it today? I don't know, but we wanted to make it complete. Um, so we included that. We included Tamil fractions. I'm sure nobody is doing that today, but we wanted to make sure that this font has it. So if somebody wants to look at how Tamil fractions look like, this font will be able to render that for them. And our goal is to cover all the major Indian scripts. Not that we don't are not interested in the minor ones. We'll get them to that, get them, uh, get to them later. Uh, all of the Southeast Asian scripts, including Myanmar, Lao, Khmer, Balinese, even at some point. That's that's a goal. Now, let me go through some unique features of each script, all right? Um, and then talk about some 
uh, a couple of issues that I can share with some, some internals, uh, some take home messages that you can also use in your designs. Now, this, that's uh, Devnagri, and you can see the start and the end of the Shadow Rekha, which is the head headline, has got a blow. Right? Now, that's some magic in there. When you break this word into two, you'll see that blobs added. I'll show that demo to you later. You see the vertical strokes, they're all identical. In fact, these vertical strokes are the same strokes that will appear in Tamo. Um, you know, if you're using Glyphs app, those are like component glyphs that you can actually, you know, paste them across when you design. Uh, the same strokes appear in like capital L or small case L or I in, in Latin. And um, they're all based on, and, and you know, the, the T uh, sign that you see, the, the, where the, the, the A matra meets, uh, the shadow rekha, that's the same junction you will see even in Tamil uh, mantra because they look, this, they look the same. Now this is the magic that I'm going to show you. If you look at, these are two separate uh, 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 words and each of them, uh, you can't actually do this because when you join these two letters, you will see the blobs, um, you know, uh, knocking onto each other. But we did some magic on that. Now these things will work across AAT, which is Apple's uh, advanced typography technology, as well as open type. Um, well, Apple also supports open type very beautifully, so you can actually do this entirely in open type, but there are some issues which we can talk about during question answer later. Now, the blobs that I talked to you about, so this is like, you know, one word, and every letter is connected. Now, if I split the letter, you see that the blobs are getting inserted at the, at the end of the first letter and the beginning of the second letter. When I merge them, the blobs disappear. They appear again, right? So, that's some magic that I can explain to you uh, how, I, how we do that later on. In Tamil, you see um, the same strokes that you see in Devanagari, uh, especially the terminals. Um, the ta, you know, the first letter, you can see that it's written, the entire letter is written without a pen lift. Um, likewise, you know, the, the, the spaces between the matras and the base letters are all taken into account. So they harmonize very well with the design that we did for Devanagari as well. Now we also included the old style letters. These are no longer in use, but even you need them to say uh, that they are no longer in use, at least to say they are no longer. And some people are loving this. They are trying to, um, you know, uh, bring their usage back. So you, I use those even when I write today. They have gone disappeared like decades ago, but you know, people have not forgotten. I think it's the same issue for Malayalam because people are going back to traditional uh, Malayalam typography or typography, although the modern one, the, the reformed one has become uh, an official one, but people are going back to the reform. Technology allows that, so we included that as well. Now, Latin, we are matching Latin, we have contextual forms, we have ligatures, um, the, all the good stuff that we have seen on Latin. Now, for Latin, uh, we had the, uh, I had the privilege of uh, Pleasure working with my good friend Tan Sveli and uh, her colleague Xian Yin, who are Malaysians as well. Uh, they've been long time typographers, and interesting that we had to meet in an overseas typography event to realize that we were both Malaysians. So they were very generous and they worked with me in finishing the, the Latin and extending that design to all the uh, extended Latin uh, languages that use that extended Latin script, like German, French, Vietnamese, and all that. Now, this is some of the work that we had used for in our discussions. We looked at how we wanted to unify the way uh, the terminals end in each script, the connecting points to make sure that there's too, not too much smudging, um, and also to reduce the congestion, especially when, when um, in, the, in the numbers like six, eight, nine, the similar things exist in terminals, which I'll show you shortly. Now, the finished product gives you a very harmonious look across all the three scripts. And we want to same. We want to realize the same thing across the other scripts that we were planning to add on to this family. And that's another example of Latin Devanagari in Tamil appearing in one screen. And some. Before I finish, let me give you some design insights. Um, first, let me talk about Latin. This is the original design. You can see that it's slightly broader than the new one when you compare to the Tamil one. And I had the privilege of showing this uh, to the late. Um, Hera Unger, who was also my teacher at the wedding when I did my unrest. And he told me that you know, if I stick to this design, the Latin sometimes can overwhelm Tamil because uh, it has got less uh, stroke density and it can appear 
bigger when you put the, both the scripts together. So, you know, I condensed it a little bit now, I think it appears, uh, and he was right, it's a lot more harmonious now, you don't see any script dominating over the other, so you, you reduce that script dominance, which is very important when you design for harmony. Now, some of the, this what I was telling you about earlier, the joints, we wanted to make sure that they are natural. When you normally write it, you, you don't actually see a disjointed uh, points there, but you know, we wanted to show a little bit of uh, a pen lift over there. So you see like the second last letter, the me, you see that the, the, the E matra actually starts a light, slightly above uh, the, the headline. Likewise, the, the last letter. So it shows a little bit of touching, uh, but not so much joining. Now, uh, for Devanagri blocks, <laughs> We had some, we explored, I had a lot, of, went back to my old days of writing assembler code, you know, so I was trying to, how do I make these things work? So one idea I thought of was to have different length of headlines and then uh, match them programmatically based on the length of the word, but that was too much work and it's arbitrary. We don't know how long a word is going to be and how many of those uh, we need to design. It's not like the E matra that we designed for a very limited number of words. So we abandoned that idea. We ended up doing this. I, I'm giving you different glyphs in different colors. So you can see there are a lot of little components that join together um, to give you that blob effect. Um, we can discuss this if you want. If you have questions, I can talk about this uh, later on. Um, conjuncts, we had a lot of discussion about this and uh, Pooja Saxena, so, so some of you may be aware of her, she, she and I had some very interesting exchanges on this. Um, and the decision was, do we make the, the, the parts of the conjunct touch or join? I know the new trend is to have them joined, um, have them developed fully as, as, a, uh, as a glyph, uh, instead of using half forms that are like, you know, half touching, um, which was done those days with, before all this open type stuff came about. But I wanted to show off my blogs, you know, because that, that's like the highlight of this whole uh, typeface. So, okay, yeah, I, I understand and I agree that, you know, we must have completely drawn glyphs for all these conjuncts. But having them touch instead of join gives it a little bit of difference. Um, you know, that, that little imperfection is, uh, is, is uh, I, you know, I consider a unique feature of this typeface. So, we reached a compromise, okay, we, we don't disjoin them, but we join them, but you know, we touch them, but we not necessarily join them. So it was a design decision. Then, when will it be ready? Well, if you have the Mac OS Big Sur, you can download it now, it's available. Some of the updates have not gone in there, but it's usable. All the three scripts are there, not yet the extended Latin, but you can download and use them now. So with that, I thank you and I look forward to questions. Thank you very much.